Hello everyone and welcome to Pravasi Express Talk Time. With me here today is Dr. Mithil Devika ji, who is an incredibly beautiful and graceful Mohiniyattam exponent. Thank you so much for being here with us today. She will be talking to us about her experience at the Indian Performing Arts Convention uh, 2023 as well as her upcoming performance at the Esplanade um, as well as her journey with Mohiniyattam. Thank you so much ma'am for being with us today. So um, My pleasure. Uh, one of the first things I actually want to ask you is how has your journey and experience been combining and working with both the arts and the sciences because um, I think it's incredibly cool and lack my informality but it's very very cool to see someone combining these two aspects together because I think uh, usually people um, think of these two as very opposite factors. Um, so as someone who's actually working on something like that yourself, uh, what is your take? Um, I think arts are in a way also related to the sciences, because especially when you talk about Indian traditional arts, um, they are very scientific. That's why we call them Shastram. Mm -hmm. And I always say, you know, the correct translation for uh, Shastriya, uh, Nritta or Kala is not actually classical, because the moment you say classical, you bring in a discrimination between the class and the master. It should be traditional, mm -hmm. it should be scientific. That should be the correct translation. We go through a rigor which is mm -hmm. not very different from a, you know, from an exact or an applied scientific study. So I think somewhere they've interspersed or these, these words and they've messed it all up. But the fact is, see art, uh, one thing about art is uh, for a creator, uh, you cannot always replicate it the same way but become science be when there is a craft. Mm. The craft can be replicated, but within that craft, you bring out aspects that cannot be replicated. Mm. So, which is why there is a system, but within the system, you're improvising, mm. yeah. That's so uh, enlightening to see how you've applied the scientific method to uh, our body of arts and really Found the Even difference. our disciplines are called Shastras, no? Natya right, Shastra, right. Tachya Shastra, so all of them are Shastras. Mm, mm. Uh, I think You're quite right, we need to stop this distinction of the two, yeah. <laughs> um, and actually speaking of which, uh, you've recently also uh, had a project sanctioned with the ISRO. Um, which is also an arts integrated advanced science program and had a, a second postdoctoral uh, research also approved with them and your first one is also with them. Um, I would love to hear more about uh, the project and your research. Well, um, I can't say much about it because I've just signed a non <laughs> uh, you know, disclosure, but um, it, this was initiated by me and uh, uh, when we talk about, uh, I, I'm doing it under the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology. I'm from the humanities, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, all artists are. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, uh, this is perhaps the first time that I'm actually working with the avionics department as well. It's not a pure human humanities subject. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, basically to make it short and creating a cryptic language for their missions using our ancient knowledge systems. Okay, I won't probe further because I understand you can't say too much about it, but that sounds very, very And that's cool. not just applied in space, I mm. think in, in defense, military. Mm -hmm. Because ours is very precise, and uh, that's why I said we have a, an established 2,000-year-old scientific system. Mm. Uh, it, it is also standalone as a language. So when you use that to build crypts, um, that would be very exciting in a space like that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And the second one is, uh, the second postdoctoral is from the state government. Okay. Um, okay. And that is just the opposite. Okay. <laughs> as much as I'm taking this out of space, uh, I'm also bringing it back to the roots mm. um, in, in the sense of how you, when you place a woman dancer today in the context of the temple, mm. Um, what kind of cognitive mapping happens, right? Yeah. What is the performance creation? Mm. She can be a ritualist. She not. She need not be a ritualist. Mm. She need not be a believer. Mm. But when you put her 
in the ambience of the temple, then what kind of work does she actually create? Mm. So that would be ad interesting because ageism, it addresses ageism, mm. which is, uh, if you look at uh, particularly Kerala or India, not many people above the age of 60 get an opportunity to perform. Mm. There are so many great, uh, you know, creators, mm. leave alone masters, but creators uh, who don't, just because they haven't had the opportunity for a long time, mm. then they recede into just teaching. So the so-called uh, one and a half, two hour concert, mm. who has actually designed it? Mm. Um, this is on a concert space and I would say our, our performances were actually never designed for a proscenium stage. Yeah. But it is within, in the, in the milieu of a temple uh, or a worship space, it really fits in. And also you, you know, when you, when you place a lady above 60 and you ask her to create something on a temple specific work, mm -hmm. then the, it entirely changes. She does not need to do a tulkatu or a til tila tilana. She can create what she thinks is best for that. There's a lot of different stories, uh, uh, a lot of different visions and versions of our art form will emerge with a study like that. It is also very sociological because you also get to understand uh, in today's context, when you put the woman dancer there, yeah. because it's been about one and a half, one and a half centuries since it's banned, right? Mm. When you put her back there, what happens mm. in terms of the community, in terms of decision makers, policy makers, you know? So there's a lot of pol socio-political angle which would be interesting to study. Mm. So even if there are challenges, that is also worth studying, mm. right? Yeah. Actually, just uh, asking you a bit more about that, both of your research works seem to be in two very separate um, lines of uh, work and different fields, but have you found any overlaps between the research you've done for them? Uh, actually, I don't th think, uh, for me, they, if you look at uh, geocriticism, mm. uh, when you place your art form outside your usual space, uh, then you you try and imagine creating work based on that locale mm -hmm. or based on that space. When we create work now, we are always thinking about the four sides of the of the stage, the entry, exit. But the moment you are put in a different place, then you start thinking differently. For me personally, during COVID, that is when I realized that we don't have. If, if the organizers decide to not give you a space, mm. then we are denied of any, or we are deprived of any space, right? What happens to our expression? So what I decided to do is I decided to go to a 2000 year old temple mm. and I, without telling anybody, I just sought the permission of Tantri there and the mm. people at the Devasan board. And I said, this evening I'm doing a performance here. It's going to be a part of the ritual and give me the permissible spaces. Mm. So when they give you the permissible spaces, then you try working accordingly. But after that, I realized that the canvas is so much more different mm. from a usual space. Right. That for me was very exciting. Yeah, and actually, could you elaborate more on that? Because I don't think many dancers have that experience or uh, to ha dance on a proscenium stage as well as really go back to where the art form came from and dance. So I was uh, inspired by this. There's something called Stri Preksha mm. from Kautilya's Arthashastra uh, where they talk about women performers who, who do a dance come theatrical style in temples. Um, and they use the the different areas of the temple, they, or they use the different contextual references of the temple to create pieces. That was long ago. Mm. We don't have much material on that, but for me, that was very inspiring. So, mm. um, given the challenges, so if I want to dance in front of the Sri Kovil, mm. they actually allowed, actually it's not, it's very difficult to have them allowed, but mm. for them, using the camera was a problem. Mm. So then I asked them, give me your, I will be using the camera, so, it's okay, give me another permissible space. So they said use any, any other space. And then something else really emerged because now within the challenges, you're also thinking, you're converting them into 
opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. A typical SWOT analysis. <laughs> uh, and then your ideas. So when you talk about geo criticism, wherever you are, you create work according accordingly. Mm -hmm. You're not going to create work and you know do it here. The same thing. You can, but what if you want to link it to the geographical context? Mm -hmm. Or, um, or or the social context of that space. That will bring out a lot of other ideas, which you perhaps may not think on a proscenium stage. Right. Wow, that's so, so... Um, and, and it gives a lot of people more opportunities. I, I feel it really targets people above a certain age to have the freedom to perform, even if it's just 10 to 20 minutes, to make something that they think is so dear to them or we have a lot of, um, uh, I think, uh, teachers who, who who do a lot of research. They may not have done their PhD, but all their work is so research oriented, right? Yeah. To have them perform at a space like that and to document both the space and them mm -hmm. is going to be very very interesting because you're you're uh, you know it's it's them becoming a part of that ambience and the ambience begin becoming a part of them. They embodying the whole thing, mm -hmm. and you documenting it. Uh, a lot of changes can emerge mm. in terms of how people will view it, how people will respond to it. And I feel ev even problems and um, even opposition is good mm. for further study. Yes, yes, yes. So when we usually do a hypothesis, we don't need to actually prove ourselves right. right. Even if you prove it wrong, it's, it's worth, uh, you know, it's, it's a lesson for another person who's working on that. Mm. So, which is why it's, it's good to work with the challenges. Yeah. Actually, that really nicely leads me to my next question. Um, the way you approach, and please do correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I understand, the way you approach your research, as well as your practice, as well as the community of artists, all seems to be from a very similar lens. Now, was this something that you developed over time? Was it an intentional development or was it just something that you felt was common sense and how you've always perceived things? I think I've always perceived. Uh, if nothing is inseparable. You can't, uh, that's why I said the problem is we always demarcate things mm -hmm. into this and that. We put boundaries. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is the age of permeability and one gets into the other, one adapts into the other. So many even our forms have adapted into each other, from each other or whatever. So uh, for me to look at something not in the, from the point of view of just who's created, but who exactly creates it, who exactly puts terms, who exactly sets the rules mm -hmm. is very, very important. Most of uh, what we do is never question. We, we learn it and we replicate it. But why, how, who? Mm -hmm. And what is the background of the who? So if I were to do Mohini uh, I must also understand that uh, if, if it did, uh, if it was resurrected in Kerala Kalamandalam, who were the key people who resurrected it? Were it the men or the women? So if it is Mahakavi Varlatol and you know A.K. Raja, then then you again think accordingly. Right. So it is very important to uh, know what's behind it. Most of the time we study our arts in isolation. Mm -hmm. If they are studying sampradayas, people don't usually study the maker of the sampradaya. Sampradayas are not suddenly you know they are not born out of nowhere. You've, you have a lineage of creators, so it's good to understand who's created what mm -hmm. and in the process also contributed to what and what is their background. Mm -hmm. Why do they think of it that way? Mm -hmm. So it becomes ethnography also. Right. You know, there's also a life that you're studying vis-a-vis -vis the, the outcome. Yes. So when you make your thing, you also get to understand if you look at your own work spanning two decades, mm -hmm. you, un you can clearly understand, it's like an autobiography. Mm -hmm. You can understand what you were all these years, how much you knew, how much you didn't, mm -hmm. what level of freshness you had, 
uh, if you've come out of a particular passion. Mm. Uh, but the fact is that you freeze it all in your art. Mm. And which is why I think it's always important to, uh, for example, when I do my work, I also try and mention the year mm. in which it was. If it's a work that was done 20 years ago, then I would probably say it was done 20 years ago. Because if I want, I can rework on that, but I don't. Okay. I want it to be a part of me, mm. a part of my sense or nonsense or whatever. Mm. It is me at that point, point of time. Okay. It is my creation at that point of time. And that is very valuable mm. in charting out my life history. Mm. That's so interesting to hear that you keep the pieces that have been with you and grown with you in your life the same. Uh, that's really beautiful to hear. It's been wonderful to hear you speak. But uh, coming to uh, how we will soon get to what you perform this weekend, uh, we would love to hear uh, your thoughts uh, and what you could share with us about what the Singapore audiences can look forward to this weekend at your performance. <laughs> they can see me perform. That's <laughs> all. I don't know what they look forward to. Is, 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 you know, it's, mm. it's, it's their story. But... Uh, I'll do my best, that's all. Yeah. But uh, could you share a little bit with us about uh, the concept or uh, what you will be presenting? I've just taken um, a couple of pieces from my, from my own choreographic work mm -hmm. and, um, and also given the time, which mm -hmm. is one and a half hours, mm -hmm. uh, give them a glimpse of, each has a different feel, I think. They're very mm -hmm. different in, by itself. Mm -hmm. So trying to give different shades to mm -hmm. the, so if you have a repertoire, then let one be different from the other. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have. And uh, if these pieces were made at different times of your life, I'm yeah. sure they will get snapshots of you as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are a couple of, uh, one or two which I'm doing for the first time, which will be premiered. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, otherwise, not they're not very long ago. None mm -hmm. of these pieces are very long mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. So your evolution through the recent changes that have happened. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. exactly, exactly. Wow. But it would be it would be great to actually even portray work that was done, you know, two and a half decades ago. But for another time. Oh, definitely. <laughs> we would love to keep having you here at Sing in Singapore. Thank you so much for speaking with me today and hope to see everyone over the weekend at the Esplanade.